The ensemble of buildings of maritime Greenwich set in and around the oldest royal park in London and bordered to the north by the River Thames reads like a who's who of British architecture. Greenwich Park covers 73 hectares and is the oldest enclosed royal park. The park provides a setting for several historic buildings, including the Old Royal Observatory, the Royal Naval College, the National Maritime Museum, and the Queen's House. There has been a settlement on this site since Roman times, but Greenwich has always been strongly associated with the English royalty. Since the land was inherited in 1427 by the Duke of Gloucester, brother of Henry V, generations of monarchs have taken this magnificent park to their hearts. As well as being of major historic importance and a World Heritage Site, the park is also a site of metropolitan importance for nature conservation, in short, a true haven for wildlife. Greenwich Park is divided in two by a steep sloped escarpment that runs from east to west. From the Blackheath Gate, the 166 hectares of Regent's Park is amazingly diverse in terms of wildlife. The park's landscape ranges from wide open plain fields and wildflower grassland to more secluded woodland, wetland and reed beds. One very important element of the management of the park is a focus on the conservation and enhancement of its biodiversity. Over the past 20 years, the management of the park has concentrated on meeting the needs of both the public and those of its wildlife. As a result, the park is an important site for wildlife, which also benefits from the stunning floral display, including the Queen Mary Gardens and the Rose Gardens. The oldest, largest, and most noticeable inhabitants of the park are its trees. Richmond Park is a leading site in the United Kingdom for its ancient trees, particularly oaks. The old Royal Observatory at Flamsteed House is situated on the brow of Greenwich Hill and dominates the landscape. The Royal Observatory is one of the most famous historic features of Maritime Greenwich, a World Heritage Site. Situated where East meets West, the home of time has been at the heart of nautical astronomy since the late 17th century, when Charles II commissioned Christopher Wren to design a building in which the first royal astronomer, John Flamsteed, could determine the longitude of places. It was built in 1675, with Sir Christopher Wren as the architect. It was built as a home for Flamsteed, who lived in the four rooms of the ground floor and worked in the octagon room above until his death in 1719. Since the late 19th century, the prime meridian at Greenwich has served as a reference line for Greenwich Mean Time. It can now claim to be the center of world time and was the official starting point for the new millennium. The observatory is the home of the world's prime meridian, longitude zero. Every place on Earth is measured in terms of its distance east or west from the Greenwich Meridian. The line itself divides the eastern and western hemispheres of the Earth, just as the equator divides the northern and southern hemispheres. Moving towards the river, on the left side of the observatory, is the Church of Our Lady Star of the Sea. First built in 1793 for Catholic seamen at the nearby Royal Hospital, the church was later rebuilt in 1851 by the architect William Wardell. The National Maritime Museum was formally established by Act of Parliament in 1934 and opened to the public by King George VI in 1937. It includes the 17th century Queen's House and, from the 1950s, the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. The museum has the most important holdings in the world on the history of Britain at sea, including maritime art, both British and 17th century Dutch, 
cartography, manuscripts including official public records, ship models and plans, scientific and navigational instruments, timekeeping and astronomy based at the observatory, as well as many other categories. The museum is also unique in the architectural importance of its main buildings, being the keystone of the historic park and palace landscape of Maritime Greenwich, which was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997. In making its collections available to visitors, the museum interprets human stories represented by the instruments, models, paintings, manuscripts, drawings, charts, uniforms, medals, and swords on display. The characters are adventurers, traders, explorers, migrants, naval figures, unknown seafarers, and the people on land who supported them. The sea is timeless and the stories reveal both the past importance of the oceans and emphasize the ways in which they remain vital today. Planet Ocean is a project of the National Maritime Museum to raise awareness of the legacy of the oceans and their future importance. The exhibitions combine historic and modern objects from the museum's collections with interactive and information technology elements to present a comprehensive interpretation of natural, scientific and human issues relating to the oceans. This perfectly proportioned Palladian house from 1616 is a splendid setting for an art gallery displaying part of the National Maritime Museum's extensive collection. The first room that visitors enter into is the visually stunning Great Hall, a huge perfect cube that rises through the center of the house's north side. The design of the whole house and the Great Hall in particular reflects Renaissance ideals of mathematical, classical proportion and harmony. Probably the most striking feature of the Great Hall is a geometrically patterned black and white marble floor. The Royal Naval College, the great Baroque masterpiece of English architecture, is set in landscaped grounds on the Thames River in the center of the Maritime Greenwich World Heritage Site. Built for a charitable public purpose rather than for personal glory, the old Royal Naval College has been a place much enjoyed and admired since it was established by Royal Charter in 1694 for the relief and support of seamen and their dependents. Sir Christopher Wren planned the site, and during the first half of the 18th century various illustrious architects, such as Hawksmoor, Van Brew, and James Athenian Stewart completed the design. As the 19th century wore on with peace established, the numbers of pensioners declined and the hospital finally closed in 1869. Soon after this, the Royal Naval College moved in, heralding a new beginning for the site as a naval training center for officers from around the world. In 1998, the Royal Navy departed for its new base at Shrivenham, and responsibility for the college passed to the newly established Greenwich Foundation. There is a rich history to the site even before Wren's Hospital. The old Royal Naval College, on the site of the Tudor Palace in which Henry VIII, Mary I, and Elizabeth I were born, is housed in a variety of some of the most palatial buildings in the country. From the riverside, the Royal Naval College is composed of the Queen Anne Court, and the Queen Mary Court and its chapel on the left, and by the King William Court with the Painted Hall and the King Charles Court on the right. Two massive domes complete the structure of the construction. The four main components are aligned with the Queen's House, arranged symmetrically along the Thames. The Royal Naval College, the most outstanding group of Baroque buildings in Britain, is also the most complex of Christopher Wren's architectural projects. A spectacularly versatile academic, Wren gained a world-class reputation as both a mathematician and an astronomer before turning his attention to architecture. With a background as a highly educated scholar and scientist, Sir Christopher Wren rose to become the most important architect of his age. The Great Fire of London provided Wren with the perfect opportunity to display his talent. 
Although his overall project for London was too ambitious in scope, he was able to provide the city with over 50 magnificent churches, including St. Paul's Cathedral. Soon, Maritime Greenwich will have a new addition to its historic landscape, the Greenwich Wheel. At 60 meters from the ground, taller than Nelson's Column, visitors will take in panoramic views from beyond the Maritime Greenwich World Heritage Site in a rare perspective. The Chapel of Saints Peter and Paul was the last major element in the hospital's construction and completed Thomas Ripley's design in 1751. It originally had a plainer interior than the present one and was typical of the English Baroque in relying for its effect on space and proportion rather than embellishment. There was a flat coffered ceiling, an apse at the east end and galleries, though less ornate than the present ones. The Painted Hall, probably the finest dining hall in the Western world, is decorated with stunning paintings by James Thornhill and is part of the King William Court. It was planned as the hospital's dining hall. Wren submitted the designs in 1698, and the roof and the dome above were already in place five years later. The allegorical theme of the huge and exuberant lower hall ceiling is a triumph of peace and liberty over tyranny and pays due tribute to William and Mary and British maritime power. Part of the town of Greenwich with its splendid private homes and terraces is included in the nominated area. St. Alphie's Church is one of the outstanding works built to replace the collapsed medieval structure. The early 18th century building is a cruciform church in Portland stone with a west tower. The Trafalgar Tavern fronting on the Thames is an elegant building in the Regency style with cast iron balconies and canopied bow windows. The Capital Ring begins in the borough of Greenwich at the southern terminus of the Woolwich Ferry. In its journey through Greenwich, it adopts the route of two existing pedestrian routes, the Thames Path as far as the Thames Flood Barrier just west of Charlton, and then the Green Chain Walk. The ensemble of buildings and landscape that constitutes the Maritime Greenwich site has preserved a remarkably high degree of authenticity in every sense of the term.